Welcome to Strange Horizon, a YouTube show intent on covering the strange happenings of this planet, including the mysterious lights that zoom past our skies and the chilling stories of people being abducted by alien intelligences that has yet to be officially recognized. Well, at least for now, because it appears that the government is attempting to further investigate UFO cases and even go so far as to possibly categorize them and perhaps even determine if these crafts are piloted by some extraterrestrial alien intelligence. My suggestion to them would be go easy on the categorization process, maybe even stay away from generalized terms like grays, otherwise you may run the risk of being labeled an extraterrestrial racist in today's world culture. Given that some extraterrestrial aliens are said to have no genitalia, it sure gives a whole new meaning to the concept of gender fluidity. Okay, well, uh, I should probably discuss the news before I get myself into trouble. In the CBS News article titled The Defense Department Announces New UFO Task Force, they mentioned that the DOD announced a new UFO task force to help the US government spot and identify unknown objects in the air and determine whether they pose any threats. The agency announced on Tuesday it is creating an Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group, AOIMSG. Man, I have to just stop right here and just quickly ask, who exactly approves the titles of these organizations? Me fail English? That's impossible. I mean, wouldn't it just be simpler to just call it the UFO group or, I mean, if you insist in being formal, the UAP group? Okay, I get it. It's kind of cool to have long arcane acronyms that only your peers understand. Makes you feel kind of specialized. OMG, LMSAO. Anyways, this group is set to synchronize Washington's effort to detect, identify, and attribute objects of interest in special use airspace and assess and mitigate any association threats to safety of flight and national security. An Airborne Object Identification and Management Executive Council, comprised of defense and intelligence officials, will oversee the new task force. Wow, yeah, can you imagine being one of those guys sitting in a bar attempting to answer a woman's inquisitive, so what do you do for work exactly? Well, I am an AOIMEC. She looks at you kind of inquisitively. Ah, screw it. I study UFOs and the possibility that they may be piloted by aliens. I can tell you from personal experience that is a line that is bound to set you up for very lonely nights. So back to the article. They write, incursions by any airborne object into our special use airspace pose safety of flight and operation security concerns and may pose national security challenges, the Department of Defense said in the press release. DOD takes reports of incursions by any airborne object, identified or unidentified, very seriously, and investigates each one. The task force is successor of the Navy's Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon Task Force, which released a report in June on their findings about UFOs, or what they call Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. So like I said, just UAP group, that, that would work. And look, we made an episode on that report. And to be honest, what I found to be incredibly interesting is not so much that there is a good fraction of cases that is still unidentified. What was more amazing is that of 144 reports originating from the US government sources, 80 of those involved observations with multiple sensors. Wow, now that is something. Because for a long time, skeptics have been trying to claim that it's their job to not rely on anecdotal accounts from eyewitnesses. That's what argument from ignorance is. We know, not only from research in psychology, but simple empirical evidence in the history of science, that the lowest form of evidence that exists in this world is eyewitness testimony. <laughs> if you come into my lab and you say, you gotta believe me, I saw it, and you're one of my fellow scientists, I say, I, go, go, back, go home. <laughs> They found another, like, Pluto Let me just finish the, what piece. was it, the lesson there, Okay. the lesson there is, you have information that you think is correct from your sensors. This was an observatory, a, fi a fine observatory. And you're gonna say, this observatory says Neptune is misbehaving. But then you learned there was something wrong with the data. This is 
the worst analogy I could imagine talking about how sensors can fail and that's what the first thing that these Air Force pilots or whoever is spotting UFOs should be doing that they should be checking their sensors the reason why it's a horrible analogy is because you cannot see Pluto with your naked eye but these pilots could directly see the UFOs darting at incredible speeds in fact there are images that were released by Jeremy Corbell that shows the objects from the fighters cockpits so he's talking about how you can't trust your sensor because of an object that you cannot see thus the sensor becomes the only way to verify the possibility of the object's existence and then he tries to analogize that with something that is being confirmed both with sensors and with vision so one thing is constantly being double confirmed and the other one you can only rely on one source he's saying that we can't trust something that can be doubly confirmed because of his analogy which is completely dependent on only one source it's a horrible horrible analogy it makes no sense whatsoever what he's saying right now it's okay neo we all have our bad days no! surprisingly i should mention that there have been some very respected intellectuals who have actually made this 180 degree u-churn claiming that although one's skeptical of ufos and aliens there is something very strange happening in our skies our conversation about ufos very likely changing in the near term right but like yeah. there, there was just a washington post article and a new yorker article and you know i've received some private outreach and perhaps you have i, I know other people in our our orbit have pe people who are claiming that the government has known much more about ufos than they have let on until now and this conversation is actually is about to become more prominent you know whoever's left standing when the music stops it's not going to be a comfortable position to be in as a you know super rigorous scientific skeptic saying there's no there who's been saying there's no there there for the last 75 years it sounds like the office of naval intelligence and the pentagon are very likely to say to Congress at some point in the not too distant future that we have evidence that there is technology flying around here that seems like it can't possibly possibly be of human origin. That is such a powerfully strange circumstance to be in. Mm -hmm. All we can say now is something's going on and there's no way it's the Chinese or the Russians or anyone else's technology that should that should arrest our attention you so, know collectively to to a degree that nothing in our lifetime has when i saw intellectual logician sam harris actually flip his tense now actually believing that et aliens may indeed be visiting our planets it was truly the first time that i began to believe that a full-blown ufo disclosure might actually be possible and to follow up that thought let me read what this article says near the end and while they're still unsure what the objects actually were or where they came from, they do know one thing for certain. The objects were real. And not only are they real, but their mere presence has shown humanity that our understanding of physics is far from complete. If you take a look at the New York Post article discussing the same story, they write, Earlier this year, officials confirmed they had investigated 144 UFO sightings reported by government sources since 2004 including unexplained vehicles that traveled at speeds of up to 43,000 miles per hour and changed direction on a dime. Now, just to give you a sense of how fast that is, that's about 24 times faster than some of the fastest bullets we can fire. Now, I know Superman is said to be faster than a speeding bullet, but would he be able to catch a UFO that is actually going 24 times that speed? Well, Technically, if you're talking about the 1978 movie where he spins around the world so fast that he actually turns back time, then yes, he could catch a UFO. But that's not really fair, given that the scene defies so many basic laws of physics, it effectively makes flat earthers seem logical. Yeah, dude. The key part of that admission that should be shocking to all physicists is the change direction on a dime. Now, based on the simple laws of inertia, it is impossible to go that fast and change directions on a dime without one, killing the occupants, or two, sustain the structural integrity of the craft, 
if, for example, it is driven autonomously by some kind of AI. In other words, these UFOs seem to be utilizing physics properties we have yet to discover. If I were to make an educated guess, I would assume they found a way to harness the forces of gravity. This is something that is not currently recognized as being feasible by physicists. So outside of simply documenting and categorizing these crafts, it stands to reason that there is a lot we can learn from their mere presence in conjunction to their behavior they exhibit. Now you understand why it is irrational to assume UFOs could be foreign adversaries like the Chinese. China, 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 China. China! So though I will be keeping my fingers crossed that this AOIMSG task force may actually be able to give a definitive categorization of what these crafts or objects are, I'm not really going to hold my breath. I guess time will tell. Now, if by chance you missed our first episode, I just wanted to quickly mention that we do have a brand new video reaction segment called What's in the World? So let's go ahead and teleport our way to the analysis pod. Okay, so this first video is about, a, well, it says here in the title, an alien caught on camera in La Junta. La Junta? I have no idea. Anyways, uh, this is coming from uh, Channel 7 uh, News from Denver, from ABC. So, yeah, let's take a look. Just about quarter to five, and take a look at this viral video from La Junta in southeastern Colorado. All right, Vivian Gomez wrote on Facebook that her... Bro, are you kidding me? Are, are they screwing with us? Is this like, a, are they like intentionally like trying to insult our intelligence? Or do they genuinely believe that people would actually think that this is an alien? What? Okay, let, let me re rewind here. What did, are you kidding me? What? This viral video from La Junta in southeastern Colorado. All right, Vivian bro. Gomez wrote on Facebook. What kind of what kind of alien does the chicken wings, bro? I mean, what is this? That her security camera captured this on Sunday morning. There are people on Facebook who say it looks like Dobby from Harry Potter, or a ghost or an alien, or a kid in flip flops and underwear. We think it looks like Lisa doing her Sunday morning dance. I don't know, Lisa, were you? Bro, I'm so nice. I know she was out of town. Give it away. Uh, this hurts, man. Th this genuinely hurts. Like, is that all that it takes? I just need to get an infrared camera on my backyard and have my kid run around like he's uh, Conor McGregor? Yeah, you know who's back up in this mother You tell me that's all it takes to get on the news nowadays? That's, this is what they publish? Now, I, I can hear from the laughter that the news commentators think that this is funny, but like, man, what a waste of time. Like, what do you, I really think this is just a commentary on their belief of what alien believers are like. They're literally saying, oh, you guys are so stupid. I bet you think that this viral video is pretty funny. <laughs> Come on, man. It's been seen by 11 million people. That's going to be the new dance <laughs> craze right <Yeah>. there. <laughs> well okay, I almost feel bad about showing that video. I almost feel like I should have picked a different video because that one <clears throat> genuinely hurts. All right. So next one I want to go over is this Superman video. Now, I know this is not exactly a uh, UFO topic, but I mean, let's be honest. Superman is technically an alien. So let's go ahead and analyze this scene, which has uh, awesome acting. I'm being sarcastic, but this is after uh, Lois Lane dies and Superman's freaking out. Here, can we put the audio on? Oh boy. So there he goes, flying with his great acting and great green screen. Excellent green screen work, by the way. It is, is that Anthony Hopkins' voice? It is forbidden for you to. So now Superman is going to be a bad boy because he's doing what, you know, is forbidden. It is 
This, this literally looks like a science class where they're showing like how an atom works and then they have the electrons spinning around the atom. Okay. Okay. Uh, um, yeah. No. So, so I, I guess the theme of these videos today is let's pick videos that will insult our intelligence. I, I don't even know if I should break it down because I feel like that in itself would be insulting your intelligence. But I mean, that's what the segment is all about. It's breaking down videos. So just to break it down, the idea that you can, first of all, turn back time by changing the spin of Earth is absolutely, insanely, childishly ridiculous. Something else is that they somehow make it as if the actual energy or the, the wind power, like, like what is he creating some kind of tornado effect around Earth to be able to change the spin of Earth itself? So even if you can create the biggest tornado type effect around Earth, first of all, that wouldn't have the power to actually change the spin of Earth. Secondly, there is no gas in space. There is no atmosphere that you can create a tornado-like force. So there's so many things that this thing is just getting completely inaccurate. Like you literally have to be like a four-year-old. Like, I, I mean, look, when I watched this as a kid, I did enjoy that, that, that scene. So this is like a, a kid scene. This is like Harry Potter type, you know, make-believe type stuff, because this is just not sensical in any way possible. They did get one thing right though. They got the rocks moving around. The water moving around. Because if you were to stop or change Earth's spin, you would literally create the biggest earthquakes and the biggest floods that Earth has ever seen. It would essentially be like a, a Roland Emmerich dream. Like that would be a perfect uh, next flick for him to, to direct another disaster film for him to make his millions of dollars. Except I wouldn't know what he would call that film. Like, like when physics ceased to exist and an alien decided to change the rotation of Earth. It's just ridiculous. I, this is just... Uh. Oh, he's, he's doing it again. Oh yeah, that's right. He has to turn back time forward again. Okay, so yeah, I mean, it's one of those scenes where it requires an immense amount of suspension of disbelief. I understand the concept of movie magic, but bro, that's like beyond movie magic. That's like make up your own rules about the very fabric of the universe itself and then sprinkle it with some movie magic type shit. That's what this is. Anyways, uh, like I said, I hope I didn't insult your intelligence by showing those two videos. That is our segment of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Okay, so just to finish off the episode, I just wanted to quickly reveal the RV image that we had selected. Unfortunately, I did not get any hits. And to be frank, the number of submissions was less than the amount of fingers that I had in one hand. So I'm not sure if the audience's interest justifies continuing the segments. I mean, obviously it'd be nice to get more views. Uh, I mean, more participation from the viewers, but I suppose that's also part of my issue too, that I'm not getting enough views in the episode, but hopefully in time that will change. But I guess it wouldn't hurt to try it one last time. So I have selected an image from a random image generator and I've attached the image to a blank document that is titled with the following code, E79D2914BC. Now, if you'd like to participate, simply write RV column in your guess in the comment section below. So yeah, let me just show you the last RV image. Uh, hopefully you're not like George Nori who has a phobia of clowns. If you try to remove view and you actually got something that is close to that, I mean, yeah, just let us know in the comment section below. And once again, thank you so much for joining me. This is Felipe speaking, signing out.